First Peter chapter number 2. Look at verse number 7. Verse number 7 says, Unto you therefore which believe, He is precious. He is precious. I want to preach on that simple thought this morning. He is precious. I remember, I remember years ago, a long time ago, I used to work at this place that sold jewelry and stuff. It was a pawn shop. It was a big old pawn shop. And it was an outdoor sporting goods store and sold guns and skis and a little bit of everything. But there's an old man that worked there and he had started it. He had, he had escaped the Holocaust back in the 40s and come over here to America. And he started that little pawn shop out of the trunk of his car. And he'd been there for years and years and years. He told me one day he, he was weighing some jewelry. And, and he told me it was some gold. And gold was about $400 an ounce. And he said, this, this has what's called intrinsic value. Do you know what that is? And I said, no, I don't even know what intrinsic means. He said, what that means is you can take this necklace here. It's a pretty necklace. And he said, but you could chop it up with an axe. And you could beat it with a hammer. And if it weighed two, two ounces, it's worth $800. It don't matter if it's a necklace or a bracelet or if it's just a clump. It's still... Its value is it's priceless. He said, it don't matter if it's laying out in the yard or if it's around some rich woman's neck. And he said, that's what's called precious metal. I thought about that this week. And I thought about these little babies when they're born. You know, you know, all these babies, bless their heart, don't get mad at me. All these babies when they're born, bless their heart, they ain't pretty, are they? When they first come out, if they're yours, they are. I mean, you see all them little wrinkled up, shriveled up little babies laying there in the nursery. You're like, Lord, have mercy, I hope none of them ain't mine. And um, then you realize that it looks like E.T. is really yours, you know. Amen. And But you know something? There's nothing in the world like when that nurse or that doctor lays that baby. And all of our kids, every one of them, it was the same thing. When they lay that baby in your arm, you look down into its little eyes, its little face, and you say one thing, Oh, Lord, ain't it precious? Amen. It's precious. That's the only word you can describe it. Well, listen, brother, when they get about two years old, you start saying other things about them. Like, boy, he sure can't eat, can he? Or you say, man, she's everywhere. Here's what people say, say, boy, she's a mess. Amen. But she's still precious. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ, the precious darling Lamb of God, is precious. He's so precious to me. I want to tell you something, folks. I'm going to tell you, here's, here's what's wrong with people. Here's, here's, what I've, here's what I've dealt with all these years. You know, there's things you can get over. There's things you can get excited about. And after a while, it just wears off and wears out and runs down. But I want to tell you something. Something for, for 37 years. And I hadn't got over it. I can't get over this thing, Brother Jeff, about being saved. I mean, I'm an old man, I feel like, and I may look like it. Oh, but it's still just as precious and real. It's just as fresh and brand new today, thumping down in my soul as it was that night, oh, that November night in 1978, when I fell down a long haired pot smoking whoremonger and God gloriously save my soul. I want to tell you, brother, He's precious. Jesus is precious. He's more than a baby in a manger. He's not hanging on a cross. He's not in the tomb. Thank God He's precious to me. That's why some people don't shout, because He ain't precious to you. Amen. You've just let it. Hey, listen, you might have a good dose of religion, but I'll tell you, when you get a hold of what some of us has got a hold of, uh, maybe it's the other way around. What's got a hold of us? I want to tell you it's precious. Thank God to heaven. I love Him this morning. I ain't perfect. I ain't even good. I ain't fit to be saved. I ain't fit to go to heaven. But thank God I do love the precious darling Lamb of God that suffered and shed His blood on the cross for me. Amen. He is so precious. <laughs> Amen. I might get around to my sermon. Outline, I might not. He's precious to me. Oh, He's the best friend I ever had. He's been good to me. 
He's never bailed out on me. He's never forsaken me. He's never hurt my feelings. Everybody will hurt your feelings sooner or later. They'll disappoint you. They'll let you down. They'll cause you to get discouraged. That's why preachers quit the ministry. They get their eyes on people instead of on Him. I tell you, if I sat and dwell on people long enough, I'd get out of the ministry. Oh, but thank God. Amen. Peter said to you that believe, He is precious. He's precious. It'll stir something in you. Amen. I'll tell you why a few things this morning. Why he is precious. I'll say first of all, because of the distance he came. He came from heaven down to earth. Do you realize the earth had already been cursed? God put a curse on the dirt that we came out of. God cursed man and woman and He cursed the earth. Everything's cursed. And Jesus left the ivory palace of heaven and came down here and became man so that you could go to heaven with Him someday. He came from righteousness to unrighteousness. He came from riches to poverty. He came from life to death. He came from light to darkness. Oh, thank God for the distance He came. I don't even know how far away it is. We was talking about it a while ago. Scientists don't even know how far away the universe is. It's 10 million light years big. You can't even fathom how big the universe is. Oh, but thank God far beyond past what the Hubble telescope can see. Thank Thank God is where my father lives. Thank God that's where Jesus left heaven and came down to this earth. He came a long way. He came a long way for you. He came a long way for me. Thank God he's precious. He's precious. He came, the distance he came. Who would have thought a king? A king would leave his throne. And become a pauper and a beggar. Become a poor man. And have nothing. He didn't have a place to lay his head. He didn't have a home of his own. Some of us drive around in $50,000 cars. He didn't have his own donkey to ride. He borrowed a donkey to ride into town. He didn't even have his own burial plot. When he died, they borrowed one from Joseph. Uh, he said, I ain't going to need it but just about three days. And you can have it back. Oh yeah, he's precious. Thank God because of the distance he came. Have you thought about the distance he came? How far would he go? He came all the way. All the way to the, all the, way to the lowest gutter. Think about that this morning. Really, listen. If you're saying here this morning you're not saved, don't look up here and say, I wish I could be like him. No, you don't want to be like me. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved by the grace of God. The only thing that separates me and you is my name's written down in glory. Hey, I ain't no prize. God didn't look down and say, oh, I want him. He's special. He's just what I'm looking for. No, 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 no. Thank God he came way down to the bottom where I was and found me. I was out there in sin. Trying to find everything I could to get into. And that's the way the flesh is. You don't listen, kids. You think you're not, you think you wouldn't do it, but you will. The devil will lead you out into sin, into that dark place, and do some bad things and mess up your life. That's the that's the drawing. That's his endemic nature to be drawn to the world in the flesh. Oh, but Jesus came all the way, brother Jeff, brother Sam, all the way to a dope dealer's house, all the way, all the way to the beer, to the package store, all the way, just for you and for me. Thank God, He's precious. Because of the distance he came. You know what people think? They pull up in the churchyard and see these pretty cars. This beautiful building. Some of us dress up. Some of us spiffy up pretty good. And they think, gosh, I couldn't be like that. I used to think that too, Brother Sam. I used to think I ain't worthy. But none of us are worthy. It ain't got nothing to do with it. 
He who knew no sin became sin. Amen. Listen to me. I'm telling you, don't you worry about how unworthy you are. Jesus Christ shed His blood for sinners. He became a friend to sinners. Thank God He is precious to me this morning. Amen. He came all the way. You say, preacher, I've seen him save prostitutes. I've seen him. Tr There'll be a drug dealer here in a few weeks at our meeting. Yeah, got popped by the DEA, federal. Went to prison. Ten-year prison sentence. And God blessed him. He got saved in jail. And he got out. And his girlfriend was a stripper in a nightclub. And he got saved. And she got saved. Oh, what a glorious family. And God's blessed them. And they're down there in the slums of Alabama. Winning men and women to Jesus. And it's because Jesus came a long way for you. And He came a long way for me. Don't you sit here this morning and say, Well, preacher, that's just not for me. Yes, it is. Jesus didn't come for the religious crowd. Matter of fact, He blistered their stinking hide. He preached hard to them people. The Bible said He came for sinners. Amen. He came to save poor, lost, dying, hell-bound, hell-deserving sinners. The distance He came. I think back. Oh, I think back to the places I've been. Amen. Thou knowest. Some of y'all know. You might sit there and put on a good mask too and say, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, you do. Somebody's visited a drug dealer's house. Some of you done things you ought not do. Some of you's done things in the back seat of a car or a motel room or on the internet. Listen, listen, are you listening? Can you hear what the preacher's saying? I'm saying Jesus Christ came a long way for you. You better give him your life while you can. He that's whole needeth not a physician. Typically, well, people don't go to the doctor. Just when you're sick. And boy, that night he found me, I was sick. Oh, sick. Oh, I was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand and saved my hand never dying soul. I want you to know something today, church. Listen, some of you ain't never shouted. You better get used to it. You're going to be embarrassed when you get to heaven. The difference, not only the distance he came, but secondly, the difference he made. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. Nobody cared for me. My mama loved me. Daddy loved me. Daddy had sort of done like this with me. Ain't nothing we can do with him. Just turn him over to the Lord. Mama kept praying. I had a few people kept praying. But the church quit inviting me. They figured I was worthless. I was hopeless. There's nothing could be done for me. But I want you to know something this morning. Jesus Christ is precious because of the difference he made. I was nobody. A thug. A punk. A whoremonger, a druggie, a drunkard, teenage alcoholic. I ain't proud of none. I'm ashamed of it. I think my kids hear me tell that stuff their daddy's done. I ain't told my wife something. But I can't even, I can barely tell God what I've done. But God knows. God knows. Oh, but the difference He made. I was captive by the devil and sin and the world. I was bound and slain and chained. And Jesus Christ came all the way where I was and unlocked the keys of bondage and set me free. I was dirty. You are too, if you're not saved. The Bible said if we walk in the light as He's in the light, we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanseth us from all sin. First John 7, He said all sin. There used to be a couple things I used to think was worse than others. And there are different degrees of sin. But when Jesus died and His blood was shed there on the cross, it paid for all of it. The debt's been paid. Amen. I was dirty. 
I was dead. The Bible said you're quickened. He had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Hey, he loved me. I love him because he first loved me. I was unlovable. I was unlovely. I was unloving. I didn't know what the word love meant. Did Jesus pass by? I didn't love him. I didn't love his Bible. I didn't love his church. I didn't love his people. I don't want nothing to do with them. I was unaware that someone was watching for me and caring for me while I was going against everything he ever stood for. Amen. Oh, yeah. The disciples come back to Jesus and they're all excited. And they said, they said, we're casting out devils and they're scared of us. Jesus said, that ain't nothing to be excited about. He said, way up yonder in heaven, you ought to rejoice that your name is written down. Rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Thank God He's precious this morning. Because of the difference He made. I sat there thinking a while ago when the choir's up here singing, I'm tearing the place up. I'm going to tear everything up this morning. I was sitting there thinking, Brother Sam, you look around. If you're lost, you don't realize what I'm trying to explain to you. I used to just be a drunk. And to believe it, here I sat in this beautiful sanctuary. And I'm the pastor of people. I'm the shepherd. And I'm a preacher. I didn't want to be a preacher. I didn't. I ran from it. I didn't want to be a preacher. Brother Ben, I didn't want nothing to do with it. I barely want to. I got saved. I said, I'll just go to church. I can play the guitar. I can sing once in a while if they need me to. If you heard me sing, you'll know that ain't my calling. But I want to tell you something, the difference. I was sitting there thinking. I was looking up there and I saw my kids up there singing and playing instruments. And tears running down their face. Saw my wife up there in the choir. And I saw these good people that love God. Love their preacher. Love their church. And pay money every week. Keep the thing going. And to take care of the man of God. I thought, boy, I've come a long ways. You've come a long ways, baby. Like that old commercial used to say. Thank God I've come a long way from being a, a long-haired pothead. Out chasing women. And carrying on doing the kind of wicked things I did. God, hey, has made a, a difference in my life he's precious to me he's precious because of the difference that he made I don't know what I'm going to knock over next amen better tie put your seatbelt on I want to tell you the night I got saved I got down on my knees a poor filthy mouth cussing skirt chasing pothead Beer guzzling. Hung out in the pool room all the time. Hung out in those kind of places. Pool room. I was a bar fly. <laughs> when I got down, I went down one way and I came up another. I got up a royal priesthood. I went down blind, but I got up with 2020. I went down dead, but I got up with new life. I went down worthless, but I got up with value and purpose. I went down a sinner, but I got up a saint. I went down poor, and I got up rich. I went down broken, and I got up mended. I went down half man, and then I got up whole. I went down lost, but I got up found. I went down hopeless and helpless without God, and I got up happy. Amen. I went down suicidal, and I came up shouting. He's precious this morning. I said he's precious. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He is precious. He's precious. I went down diseased, but I got up healed. I went down ruined, but I got up renewed. I went down for the last time, and he threw out the lifeline. He's been the best friend I ever had. He's been the best friend. You don't know. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue till you get saved. All these years I've had friends come and go, acquaintances and all that stuff. And I've still got some good friends in the ministry and people I know. We've met some good people. There ain't nobody. Nobody like Jesus. 
I'm try- I can't even scratch the surface this morning. I'm trying to get you to understand. If you'd give your life to Him completely, wholeheartedly, 100%, and go to church every time the door's open, and give Him your all, it'll change your life forever. It'll change your family. It'll change your spouse. It'll change your children. It'll change your whole outlook on life. Brand new. Psalm 2017 said, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. <laughs> He's a forgiven friend, a faithful friend. He's a favorite friend. And he's a famous friend. He's the best friend I've ever had. He's close, he's caring, he's constant. Friends are like good health. You don't realize what a gift they are until you lose them. But I'm telling you, if you put your trust in Jesus this morning, he'll be the best friend you've ever had. You'll never lose him. You never wake up one morning and he don't speak to you and don't answer your call. You don't ever text him and he don't text back none of that business with him. He'll always be the same right now, next week, next year, 10 years from now, 50 years from now. You realize this morning that Jesus Christ is the same to me as he was way back yonder in the 70s. Listen, I can get over some things, but I ain't got over him yet. The distance he came. The difference he made. Thirdly, the debt he paid. 1 Corinthians 7, 23 said, You're bought with a price. Be not you the servants of men. Do you realize Jesus told when and where and how he would die? And it happened exactly like he said. As old black preacher said, Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody, you said that ain't proper English. Might not be proper English, but it's proper preaching. Ain't nobody like him. Hey, listen, this ain't about church. This, listen, going to church just helps you get your soul fed and live right, live clean, live a godly life. This ain't about church. This ain't about who's got the best church. It's about him. It's about the precious Lamb of God that suffered and died for you. Listen, you're under condemnation of death. You're going to die and you're going to hell without God. But he paid that debt. Do you realize he paid a debt he didn't know? And you had a debt you couldn't pay. What if on judgment day, the Lord said, okay, I'm in a trading mood. What do you got to offer? You're lost. You're going to hell. You're not saved. You're unrighteous. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. There's none that seeketh after the God. There's none good. All those nuns in the book of Romans. So there's none. What if God said, I'm, in a, I'm kind of in a trading mood. What you got to offer? What are you going to offer him? Nothing. Nothing. You, if you offered him your life, he's already got that. He holds that in the palm of his hand. You know, he can just squeeze it out just like this, and it's gone. You're gone. The Bible said the breath of life is in his hand. That old ticker will quit beating when God gets ready for it too, and nothing in this world will prolong it. You can't stay no longer than God wants you to. We're all leaving here. We didn't come to stay. We came to leave. And here's the key. The key is being ready. Have your bags packed. You say, preacher, you saying you're better than me? No. You're missing it. I'm saying I ain't no better than you. But he is. It's about him and his saving grace. The Bible said, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself. For it is the gift of God, lest not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. If it was, we'd brag about it. If it was works, I could brag about how good I'd done and all, the, all that stuff. But it ain't. The Bible said it's by grace. It's a free gift. He paid the debt on the cross of Calvary. Amen. When he hung there on the cross, do you know what he meant when he said it is finished? He didn't mean, well, this is over with. I'm, I don't have to suffer. I think what he meant. You know, over, there, over there in the old country, they say when people owed taxes, them tax collectors were brutal like Zacchaeus. They'd come around, and they'd collect taxes, and they'd hard on people, rough on them. Wouldn't show them no mercy, throw them out in the street. Repossess their homes. You think you own a home, but you really don't. Quit paying your taxes and see who comes after it. Now, you may see who moves into it. But they say that that happened when somebody paid off all their taxes, and they got fortunate enough to pay it off. 
They said the tax collector would come around and stamp on the door on the side of their house to tell us that. You know what that means? Paid in full. When Jesus said to tell us that, it is finished. That's in English. He said it is finished. That means he stamped it. It's paid in full. Listen, God's requirement for justice. God demanded justice. And mercy came to pick up the tab. Ain't you glad this morning? He's precious because of the debt he paid. What are you going to say? If on judgment day, the angels grab you by the collar and hold you out over the flames and say, give me one reason why I shouldn't turn you loose. What are you going to tell him? You're going to have to say nothing. If you're saved, you just pointed his son. That's all you got to do. Hey, it ain't about being good and being bad. It ain't about the good outweighing the bad and the bad outweighing the good. It's about being born again of the Spirit of God. Thank God I'm glad He is precious because of the debt He paid. Number four, He's precious because of the de devotion He commands. One day He's walking along. Hadn't been in the ministry very long and He walked by. This guy worked for the IRS. You know, not they don't they don't hire thieves and bum. Well, nowadays they do. Nowadays, the IRS is the biggest thieves in the country. But there's a man sitting there, taking people's money, tax collector, named Matthew. Jesus walked by and said, "This, follow me." And the Bible said Matthew did this right here. It said he went. And got up and walked off and followed Jesus. And history records that Matthew was one of those that died a martyr's death. I'm telling you this morning, he's precious because of the devotion he commands. You should be devoted to him this morning. If you're devoted to him, you'd be... Don't get mad at me now. If you're devoted to him, you'd be devoted to his house. You know, when I got saved, I wanted to go to church every night. I still want to go to church all the time. still look forward to it. When I got saved, my wallet got saved too. He said, Preacher, you always have to get around to that. Yeah, because it's Bible. Amen. It don't bother me to give. I like it. I enjoy it. Just like when one of my kids needs something. Daddy, you got $20? Gladly. Here. I don't want my kids to be broke. I don't want them to go to work and not have lunch. That's the same way God is. Hey, the devotion and command. Our life should be all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. The Lord of glory. Who died for our sin and rose from the dead. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He commands us to follow Him. He comforts us when we're burdened. When we're broken and when we're bad. The Bible said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, in all thy ways acknowledge Him. He shall direct thy paths. You know why people have family trouble? In all thy ways. They're not trusting Him in all thy ways. They got so much time wrapped up in television and computers and new cars and cell phones and none of those things are a sin necessarily, I don't guess. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ commands devotion. He's supposed to be number one in our lives. He should be the one thing and the one person in this world that makes your wheels turn. It's funny. People's always got something else to do. But I'm going to tell you what. Ronnie, come on piano. I tell you what I've learned about people. I've been a pastor a long time. People do what they want to do. Yeah. I don't know why I got on that. I don't really don't know. But I know this. I know that a long time ago, me and Debbie started out real with them little bitty youngins real when they was real little. And we said we're gonna live for God, we're gonna serve God, put him first, we're gonna pay our tithes, we're gonna go to church, and I'm gonna preach when they ask me to, and sometimes preach if they don't ask me to. I went to church for him and just jump up and took over. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, can I say something? Most of them, yes. Yeah. Young man, go ahead. I just cut loose and preach. Amen. But I'm saying he commands our devotion. And I love him this morning. He's precious to me because he's the number one. He's the one constant in my life that never changes. Right now, our, our church is riding the wave. And we're way up here. But six months from now, we could hit rock bottom. And it's a possibility this church could turn on me. It happens. And next day, preacher, we don't need you anymore. It happens all the time. But I tell you, if that happens, I can always count on. He's still just as real. 
He'll be just as real then as he is today while we're on cloud nine. Y'all heard me tell a lot of stories about my daddy. He was, a, he was a good man, good preacher, good pastor. He loved people, loved people. Daddy was one of them kind of people that just want to fellowship all the time. Want to go to somebody's house and one of them over to the house just wore mama out all the time. Coffee and cake and the kids would play. And daddy's the type, when you got ready to leave, he'd talk to you and talk to you and follow y'all out to your car and you're in reverse backing up. He's still standing out the window talking to you. He was like that till he died. But I saw daddy get some discouraging. I never really seen him get discouraged. I seen him get aggravated. And church worker discourage you. I saw him one time get broke. I mean, crushed. Some of you heard me tell it. He just got crushed to the ground. But I'm going to tell you something. He didn't stay there. And I wasn't even saved then. I was a teenage boy. I was about 16 years old. And Daddy would walk through the house. I'd get up at night and go to the bathroom. And Daddy would be walking through the living room drinking black coffee. Back then, they didn't have all that sugary, spicy, candy-flavored coffee. Just black. Debbie's Daddy poured it out. He'd drink it so hot and black. He'd have to cut it with scissors as it's coming out. And Daddy would be walking through the house drinking black coffee at 3 in the morning, talking to himself. I thought, this church has killed him. They killed him. And I wasn't even saved, and I, and I hated them people for what they did to him. My daddy was a good man. Daddy never heard off a lie. Never did no, no indiscretions. Never stole no money. Never. His only crime was he loved people so much and loved God. And that'll happen to a good man. He was just broken. Shell of a man. I, that smile was gone. Miss Shirley, that, that brightness in his eyes. Daddy had big old blue eyes. Had a sparkle all the time. Loved people. Just liked to talk. That was gone. He didn't have it no more. Daddy looked like a dead man. But you know what? That didn't last very long. About five or six months went by. Somebody called and said, Preacher, would you mind coming up here and preach for us? We don't have a pastor. He said, I don't know if I want a pastor or not. Anymore. They said, well, just come preach for us. And I saw that sparkle start coming back. And boy, my daddy got up to preach. I want to tell you what, brother. He was jacked up. Both barrels loaded. Got back on his new claws. I mean, he preached so hard. He sweated till his shoes sw swished and sloshed when he walked. I'm telling you, you talk about a man that was called to preach and anointed of God with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I sat there as a lost teenager. I'm like, yeah, my daddy's back. And you're going to be in trouble. But here's what I'm trying to say. It wasn't because Daddy was special and he was good. Daddy kept his love and his fascination for the Lord Jesus Christ. I figured it out when I got older and I got saved. He wasn't talking to himself. He wasn't, he wasn't talking to himself. He wasn't talking to himself. He was whispering and drinking coffee and sipping coffee. And talking to the master of the sea. While his ship was being rocked to and fro. And it felt like he was going under. He was talking to the master of the sea. And he was saying things like, Lord, I've tried to be faithful. I don't know what to do. Help me, Jesus. Help me lead my family right. Help me to stay faithful. Help me to be real. God, just help me to stay right with you. I'm just a man, Lord. I can't take much. Help me, Lord. That's what it was. He commands our devotion. Amen. If you're going to be sold out to anything, it ought to be Jesus. Amen. There's people that sold out to their favorite sport. There's people who drive for hours to go watch uh, the Steelers or the Jets or the Giants or the Falcons or whoever and drive for hours to go watch a ball game and got them stickers all over the car, wear the shirts. And have, there's nothing wrong with loving a ball team. But I got a mighty people. I'm talking about somebody that gave their life to save you from eternal hell. You ought to have all your devotion to Him. I'll tell you one thing. When I got saved, I first got saved. I know we're running a little over today, but that's, that's going to be okay. Just don't leave the biscuits in the oven next time. When I first got saved, I had a, a few things. The Lord kept telling me to give this up and give that up. I'd come to the altar and I'd cry like a baby. Sling snot, blow snot bubbles and ball. Lord, I want your will in my life. You need to give this up. You need to give it. Finally, one day I said, Lord, if I keep giving up stuff, there ain't going to be nothing left but just me. And the Lord spoke to me clear as day and said, that's what I want. I just want you. 
I'd have never married this woman if she'd have said, I'll be yours 80% of the time. No, she's mine. All of her. All the time. That's all Jesus wants of you. You say, preacher, I can't preach. I can't sing. He ain't asking to do none of that just yet. But he might. Some of you young boys, y'all will be thinking about what does God want me to do? He commands your devotion. God may want you to preach or go on the mission field or get in a Sunday school class and pick up your Bible and start teaching. Don't sit around here and wait till us old people sitting in the nursing home eating pudding because we can't chew nothing with our gums. Get busy and do something for God while you can. I was talking to a preacher on the phone just this morning. And he said, you know what's weird? Young preachers nowadays, you ask them to preach. And they'll hem haw around like, well, yeah, I guess I could. When I first started preaching at 20 years old, if somebody asked me to preach, I about jumped out of my skin. I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I didn't know what homiletics was. I preached 10 years before I even knew what that was. Some of y'all still don't know what I'm talking about. When I went to Bible college, I've been preaching 10 years. They started talking about homiletics and hermeneutics. And I said, I'm in the wrong place. Talk English! <laughs> but I will tell you something. When I started preaching, I was devoted, sold out. I said, God, I'll go anywhere. I'll preach anywhere you say preach. I know some preachers got different convictions. They say, well, I'd never preach it, so-and-so. And if they call me to come preach and don't put no chains on me, I'll preach anywhere. Amen. Anywhere. There's a church of Christ called me one time and said, would you come preach for us on Sunday? I said, you might have the wrong number. I'm a Baptist. They said, we know who you are. I said, well, I'm Baptist and I believe the King James Bible. They said, listen, if you'll come at 11 o'clock, all we're going to do is get up and introduce you. And it's all yours. I said, I can do that. And I got to preach. I had a good time. And they had more life than most Baptists do. I was ashamed of the Baptist brethren. I'm ashamed of what us Baptists have come to. Listen, it ought to make us shout. If people can shout and root for their favorite team and they ain't won a game in six months, my Lord, what's wrong with Christian people? Yeah. They all holler, whoa, number one. And they ain't all number one. Ain't no one's number one probably ain't going to stay there. But the one we serve, he's number one. And I'm telling you this morning, he is precious. He's precious to me. Is he precious to you? He said, preacher, well, I'm saved, but it don't make me care. You don't have to shout like we do. You don't have to act like Sam or Brother Jeff or some of these ladies up here. But you ought to do something. You ain't got through your whole life like this, are you? When you meet him and you see the scars in his hands and feet and you have something to present to him, you're going to walk up to his throne like this? Yeah, whatever. No. You'll fall on your face. He commands our devotion. Sold out. Completely fa fanatic. Be a fanatic about Jesus. Fall in love with him. If you're saved this morning... Listen, some of you, I know what's wrong with you. You've got so tangled up in the world that, that you just, it's not that you're not saved. You just, the relationship has just got a little blurry, a little gray. You need to refocus, rekindle the flame. The Bible said, draw nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. The sweeter I treat Miss Debbie, the sweeter she treats me. The more I tell her how pretty she is, how much I love her, the more sweeter she is to me. That works the other way around, too. If I start being ugly to her and mean to her, she don't talk to me. I don't like eating McDonald's and sleeping out in the yard with the dogs. But he is precious. Let's stand, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for what our hearts have felt this morning, for being so real. Thank you, Lord, that you're real to us, Lord. It's not just a imagination or a figment of our imagination or some kind of head game. But you're real. And I pray this morning, Lord, if there's somebody here that don't know about this relationship we've been trying to talk about, let them come up this morning at the foot of the cross and get acquainted with him. And we'll give you the praise. With every head bowed and every eye 